McFly. Diff? Kid. Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Aw. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Ahem. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um... Uh, never mind. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? No, no. What am I missing here? Or do we take H to stand for committee line operator? But in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work.
what's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop, I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party in the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. So Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. I better not. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. Back. Marty, have you found my younger self yet? Well, I met your younger self. Great! And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo! How could I have forgotten? 
In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something with an inverse of something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Maybe if we solve that problem he's working on, he'll be more inclined to trust you. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Blast! If only I could hear him myself. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. I better not. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. Le I am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! But how many newtons are required to maintain- Maintain a constant mass- Don't think, Emmett, think! H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I- oh. Acceleration is reduced by the inverse of the derivative of the speed relative to the speed of light. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. Doc will want to hear this. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. 
I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah! Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> That's fully operational. Oh. Tonight. Oh. Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. Shh. It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen! Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. I need to get this subpoena into Arthur McFly's hands, so young Doc will have the time to help me bust old Doc out of jail. I need to get this subpoena into Arthur McFly's hands, so young Doc will have the time to help me bust old Doc out of jail. This subpoena's for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a Tannen, all right. This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. 
You of all people should know that. But couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? <laughs> Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket-powered drill? Ah, that'd be Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. It was... a revelation! Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Harry Callahan! Yeah! Hey, how you doing, Einie? Einie? It's short for Einstein. Einstein, of course! Because he was a patent officer just like you! What the hell matches? You, you got kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Isn't the soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, Sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? That hat, you lousy crook! Damn it! Damn it! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! me up. Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. 
Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good! Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls, or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I can help you deliver soup, but I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. Did you finish the story you interviewed before? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit! Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. I got a book. Oh? Where? My grandpa may be a little wimpy, but he's got great taste in hats. Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy, can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Huh. Deja vu.